Blightly caressing a gem studded vena, whined languor lilting with lucid word, bewitching as a blue black sapphire, let me invoke you, daughter of Matanga. Adorned with four hands and crescent moon, with upraised breast anointed with saffron, with sugarcane bow, rope, gold, and flowered arrow, let me invoke you, mother of the universe. So I think the, the Sanskrit script that's been painted on many of these paintings are based on the Sanskrit um, syllables in this book. And the translations are mine. I've, I've worked on the translations with Mankel. He's 82 now, and we've been having phone conversations while I was working. And these two books were simultaneously written. So a lot of uh, influences are on goddesses and the concept of women. So obviously, without referring to the woman as a goddess, I'm referring to the goddess as a woman. So, um, Carol has also worked on this book called Night Sky Between the Stars. I think many of you were there with me when I launched this book during one lit fest at some point. Uh, and this is based on a twilight prayer from the Rig Veda, where the mantra is personified in female form. And mine is kind of a challenging reading of the mantra, which says, if a woman is a goddess, why don't you respect her? A dark woman on a swan alights at twilight time, with lotus rosary, kamandalu, and coy smile. I invoke Surya, Savitar, jewel of the sky, as he thunders past in his golden chariot, water lilies in hand, his seven steeds neigh. Darkness enters day, and the sky lights up in a drift of rising stars. Twilight, time of prayer. I breathe in Gayatri, mother of Vedas. I invoke fire, air, water, earth and sky. In my twilight world, I push rhythms into the womb of time. Onomatopoeia, 
rasadhvani, sound made sense in the essence of being. These are not words, but wisdom that gives birth to words. Gayatri informs me. She is no myth. She is a living mantra, birthing dawn and dusk. Her body is earth, her breath is air, her womb water, her skin the sky, her soul is fire, her hair rays of darkness and light. She is a sound of life <clears throat> spilling from Savitar, sun. My eyes cloak the night and ignite light. I chant the womanhood incarnate. I am melody, I am rhythm, I am fusion. My skin falls, my breath dissolves, my body melts, my womb flows, my soul burns in eternal flames. I am the earth seeking the sky at twilight time. I am that woman, Gayatri, lover of Brahma. The next one again has been worked on called creation. What I'm questioning in this poem is the creation myth and the patriarchal Vedic gods. Hinduism, although worships goddesses, I am questioning the element of patriarchy within uh, the pantheon. Creation. Creatio ex nihilo. In the fable time of all beginnings, you cast man into cosmogonical myth. There was no being, you say, nor non-being. There was no air, no sky beyond. What covered the earth? Was there water unfathomed? What was above? What below? There was no death, you say, no immortality. There was no day, no night, no light. Only darkness cloaked in darkness. Then something breathed windless in that void of all voids. In the beginning, there moved a desire within, the first seed of mind. Only poets who churned their hearts found the tenor of this primordial seed and its unseeded half. Traversing the being in metaphor and metonymy, they enacted the courts of creation in syllabic verse. There were impregnators, you say, mighty forces with energy beyond. But where was the core? Where was the hidden womb that carried the germ, the pulsing rhythm of warmth, the sacred chasm wherein the flame of life was nurtured? When was this world created? Who was the primum movens? Who was the creator? Did he fashion it or did he not? Or was it a woman? Did she mould it or did she not? Whose eye controls the world from the highest heavens? Perhaps she knows it. Perhaps he does not. The gods came later with thunderbolt, discus and trident demanding sacrifices on fire, earth, water and air. Sacrifices with threats drawn out on every side, woven into the warp and weft of chant and hymn, outspinning the threats of Sama versus onto the walls of heaven, conjoining Savidur with Ushni, Soma with Anushta, Viraj with Varuna and Mitra. In my mind's eye, I see them all, the gods who line the roaring sacrificial fires and those who perform sacraments and ritualistic meter, binding and unbinding. But what of the goddesses who birthed these gods? What of the earth woman who bore the primeval man? To which of these deities do I offer my verse sacrifice? The next one again is a woman theme. I mean, the whole book Night Sky Between the Stars is based on a woman theme and the worship of goddesses in Hinduism. Do not burn me, fire. Just illumine me in your glowing splendor and send me onward. Sun, give me your eyes. Wind, give me your breath. Water, give me your womb. Sky, give me your dreams. Moon, give me your passion. Do not forsake me, O gods. Take my verse sacrifices and in return rain down your thunder to mould my spirit. Clad in the brocade of purple mornings, let me ride your chariot again, O dawn, into the soft lap of pregnant earth. Earth, bear me yet again as another golden grain of life. Do not burn me, fire. 
I am made of ancient promises flowing out of cosmic rivers. Let me wear yet another cloak, waxing and waning in the light of summer solstices, in the darkness of winter equinoxes. Let me spin in argent gyres of lightning and trench myself in fragrant rain. Let me swing on errant monsoon winds. Let me seek dark eternity in grains of sand and drops of dew. Let me seek checkered immortality in golden goblets of bird song. Do not burn me, fire. Chuli sanadatrige, sanumat putrige.